Line. We are talking about affordable housing, not just in Nashville, but across the state, how you can afford home ownership, how you can make it a reality. If you have a question, give us a call tonight, 615-737. Plus, I have Marshall Crawford from the Housing Fund with me tonight answering these questions. Some of them are pretty tough. Yeah, they We're doing are. our best here. Let's talk to Eamon. He's on the phone. Hi, Eamon. Hi, how are you? Good. Go ahead with your question. Uh, young man, what is your name, please? Marshall Crawford. Marshall, beautiful name. Thank you. Well, sir. I got tired of watching Fraser, so I <laughs> well, we're glad you joined over us. to your channel, which I always seem to find on open line. Mm -hmm. Get there today. And uh, I heard Marshall talking about affordable housing for the middle income mm -hmm. and how they can buy an affordable home. Well, this open line today is about affordable housing for the poor. The middle class can do what they want to do and waste their money on an overinflated market, right? Now, here's, here's the gist of the whole thing. There is no affordable housing, and you can't tell me the truth and say there is. Mm -hmm. You can't go into a complex being a poor person and afford an $895 for one bedroom, and let's say you want a, a seeing uh, friendly companion like a, a monkey. You know, they're good companions <laughs> if you treat them right. There's a $300 pet fee. Yeah. A monkey ain't a pet, he's a companion. <laughs> and a dog should be looked at that way. It's a companion, not a pet. So you got 300 bucks right off the bat put onto your rent. And then you got another $20 a month pet fee, which I don't understand how they can do that when you already pay 300 bucks for any damage the monkey might do. Because dogs don't make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are a hoot, Eamon. You I are. said you are a hoot. Thank you for calling in. I understand what you're saying. That yeah, just, this just doesn't seem affordable at all, the yeah. prices that are out there right now. Explain um, to us why. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. I think, do, doesn't it all go back to supply and demand? It does. That is huge. Supply and demand, employment opportunities, inflation. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are still people who are having a difficult time um, dealing with the housing crisis that we had um, years ago. Yeah. And so they were affected by that. So they're struggling. But individuals that weren't affected by that, that were renters at the time, mm -hmm. now they're taking advantage of the opportunity as it's presented before them. And then the other thing is Nashville is a hot market. Yeah. I mean, everybody is wanting to move here. I mean, all eyes are on Nashville. And so when you have those factors, you're absolutely yeah. right. It's going to make it even more challenging. And I would, I would have taken issue yeah. with one thing that Eamon said. This isn't a poor people's issue. Yeah. This very much is a middle class issue. Yeah. Trying to find affordable housing is something that is proving very tough for people like police officers Correct. and some nurses and Correct. technicians. I mean, just the average Joe and Jane. It Ab is tough. Mm, absolutely. And what um, the term that we use out there is called workforce housing. Yeah. I mean, how do we provide housing for those individuals that are working every single day mm -hmm. to try to make ends meet? But those are the cost burdens that a lot of yeah. people are impacted by that make it difficult for them to be able to get sustainable and mm -hmm. attainable housing that is so needed for this Nashville market. And I just want to bring this up and make it take us a little off uh, course okay. here. But I read this today. It came into my email today okay. from um, THDA. It said more than half of the Tennessee communities where housing is currently considered affordable mm -hmm. are actually unaffordable when you factor in transportation Absolutely. costs. Because a lot of people are having to live way out yeah. in order to come to their job downtown. Mm -hmm. And it costs a lot of money to do that. And it does. You're absolutely right. But not only that, just think about the, the um, health care costs, yeah. um, grocery costs. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you factor all of those elements into it, it just makes it even more um, the strain that they're having on their incomes, especially when wages are, are um, staying stagnant. Mm -hmm. They're not increasing. That's why we're trying to change this conversation yeah. so that we can do whatever is necessary to help these individuals um, address some of this. And again, you're right, transportation is just one piece of, mm -hmm. the, of the puzzle because we got to make sure that not only are we creating an affordable housing, but we're creating quality Yes. housing as well and that's an important part of the equation yeah absolutely okay mm -hmm. I know we have another caller who did I Lamont is hanging tough on this line Lamont thank you for your patience go ahead with your question Come on, you are yes, make sir. sure you turn down that TV in the background though for us you won't okay, drive us let me, nuts let me, let me turn it off. 
Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. thank you. My name is Meredith Lamont Wilson. Thank you for calling in. Okay, and I have been in Nashville for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I, admittedly, I have a checkered past. You know, but I ain't never killed nobody, read anybody, robbed nobody, nothing, nothing terrible. <laughs> But I, I, I've been in prison several times, and I'm 63 years old. Everywhere I go, they, they take my money to put an application in, yeah. $25, $30. But then they tell me why, you know, come to Tuesday right there say, I, I, I don't qualify. They can't right. take me. Mm. Right. So, so what am I supposed to do? Yeah, yes, what, let me ask you, are you um, um, depending on, on Section 8 help right now? No, ma'am. I filed for Section 8 about, about uh, eight, eight months ago, and they haven't approved it. Ah, okay. okay. I got gotcha. you. Know, I, I, I live on SSI. You are in a I'm pickle. I'm going to pay some rent. Right now, I'm living in a room with another man mm -hmm. paying six hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. 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 Six hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. and that's ridiculous. That's a lot of money. That sure is a lot. I can't save no money. I can't stack no money. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm bad. I got to be on food stamps and all this stuff. And uh, I know I was bad. I, I was. I was bad at one time, but I, I'm reformed. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I did my time in prison. I didn't ever kill nobody, nothing crazy. I was just a drug dealer. My daddy corrupted me and stuff. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I didn't expect to stay. I'm 63 years old, be 64 this year, and I can't find nowhere. Right. So where mm -hmm. I go? They well, tell me I got a criminal past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, they, but they take my money. Uh huh. Twenty five, thirty dollars for that application. And then tell me a uh, uh, day or two later. I don't qualify. Well, give me my money back. Yeah. Well, where did I take well, my let, money? Well, let me put you on hold. I want you to turn back up your TV, and we're going to talk about this issue and see if Marshall has any ideas on, on where to go, what to do. Mm -hmm. He's in a pickle. It yeah. makes it tough. It, it makes it very tough. And, again, I would encourage you to reach out to some of the nonprofit organizations. We have some, the city has some great nonprofits that can provide some help and some direction and guidance Do you around have any, this. Any off the top of your head that you can think of that would be kind of what he's looking for? Yeah, I would encourage, you know, Dismas House has oh, been wonderful. a wonderful organization in helping individuals mm -hmm. that have been formerly incarcerated yeah. get back on their feet. And I'm sure that Gerald Brown um, would be able to provide some guidance and yeah. really helping this individual think through. They take them through an educational mm -hmm. process, help them thinking about their finances and what mm -hmm. they and how they work through all of this. So I would definitely give a plug to Dismas House yeah. and Gerald Brown for being able to, um, to provide know, some Gerald, guidance. And there. I've done a little work yep. with the Dismas House. Okay. They are an incredible organization. Mm -hmm. So listen, Lamont, I want you to start there, Dismas yeah. House here in Nashville. Give them a call and just say, can you point me in the right direction? Mm -hmm. And I bet the answer is we got some options. Yeah. So, all right, good luck. We're going to take another break. We have more calls when we come back, so stay where you are.